What's going on guys? Today we want to talk about using business credit to start your business from scratch. Right now there's one, two, three, four, five, I think about 10 guys online that are advertising how to get business credit or to get business funding to bankroll to set up your business from scratch and i was wondering about that because here's the thing and i want to tell you a few things about myself before we get into the ramification of going out getting business credit to fund to start your business to invest into either cryptocurrency, to invest in real estate, to invest in anything. Life is a jungle. You need savage business and finance to lead you out of the jungle today. My first business was by the name of GC Solutions. And what I was selling was used office furniture. And I had a job at the time. And essentially this business cost me a hundred, I think a hundred bucks for the LLC, hundred bucks for the business checking account was free and the EIN, which I got from the internal revenue service, which was free. My 100% startup cost of my first successful business that put $250,000 in a bank account in less than a year was less than $200 to get that business started. And let's talk about my second business, which on paper, it was successful, but in reality, it wasn't. And I will explain. My second business was GC Solutions selling new office furniture I had departed my job and I sold $1.6 million worth of commercial office furniture. But I made a ton of mistakes. I made some issues with measuring. So even though I did 1.6 million in profit was about 40K. And I had friends who was like, man, that's good. You actually made a profit your first year. They were like, hey, keep it going. But once again, the first version of GC Solutions selling used office furniture left a lingering impression in my mind. I was like, we need to find some used stuff to sell, which gets me into my third business. And before I go into the third business, the second business, because it was already set up, already had the LLC, already had the EIN, already had the business checking account, there were no setup costs. There were no setup costs. Third successful business, the upscale garage sale, I spent about $30,000 over six months. So that's gonna be about 5,000, no, over six months. 30,000, it's gonna be yeah, about 5,000 a month. That's what I spent to get that business started. I had to go ahead and form an LLC, get a new EIN and some other things. And my startup cost for that business was about $30,000. Because here's the thing, when I started that business, I had no clue to what I was doing. I was just out there on the storage auction trail, looking at stuff, bidding on stuff. And in the beginning, I completely and utterly sucked. I didn't know what I was bidding on. I was just bidding on stuff. And the veterans were running me up because it's like, this guy's got a little money. We're gonna challenge him, right? Now, because I had that 250, I wanna say that I started the storage auction business with about $350,000 cash money in the bank. I spent, 30,000 before we started to make money. And I will share the story with you how I learned how to make money in the storage auction business. One of the things that I learned from being in corporate America, rent a crate, the office furniture stuff, that was all corporate America. We had well-defined methodologies and procedures on how to do business. And I took those well-defined methodologies and procedures to the storage auction business where 
No one who was doing the storage auction business in Georgia was doing the storage auction business the way that I did. So one of the things that I would do was watch people and I would watch people and I would watch what they would buy, we'd watch what they would spend. And I was very chatty. I was like, hey, where do you sell? You sell at the flea market, you have a store. And I began to notice that the people who had stores had more money to buy. And the people who sold at the flea markets, which is just two days. So putting up two days of sales versus someone who's selling five to seven days, just, it doesn't work out. I learned, uh, there was this one guy I was watching and he always bought these big full units, full from the ruler to the tuta. And I went, one day I was out there and I bought a huge unit that was full. It was cost me about $480. And once we, we had to rent trucks to move this unit because we didn't have anything on hand to really move it. We had a van, but we didn't have any real trucks. So we had to rent a truck. So it was 480, I think it was 120 for the truck. So that's uh, 600 bucks. And once we started to pull stuff out, there was like three bedroom sets, a dining room set, a dinette set, washer, dryer. Literally after selling the first third of that storage unit, we were at like $3,000 and our cost, our hard cost for the unit, for the truck. And also I can go ahead and put the hard cost because once again, we had elevated from selling in the flea market to getting our own stores and warehouses. But that whole unit, which cost me on the front 600 bucks between the truck and the unit, and let's go ahead and put warehouse cost. The first warehouse was pretty cheap. It was only 895. It was only 3000 square feet. So we would go 600 with the 895. That was 1400. The storefront was 1500. So we were at $2,900 startup cost, right? That unit did $10,000. That one unit did $10,000. And that's how I learned how to buy storage units. And let's go ahead and kind of going a little sideways. I bought a unit based upon the value of the unit, but what a lot of people were doing were buying storage units based upon their ability to move the storage units. So I've quickly, six months in, I quickly found out that was the wrong way to buy storage units. It was that, because I, I spent a lot of money just going ahead and putting this unit the cost of the rental truck, the cost of the warehouse, the cost of the storefront. And we still made three X times that with that unit. And then next month, that's all I bought. If it was like a little spacey or a little, just ignored it. And I just bought big full units from that point on. And I remember the first six months, I spent $3,000 my own money because I literally started the business with 350,000 because of the success of the first business and the moderate, very moderate success of the second business. And the third business, I started with 350. I spent about 40,000 because I had living expenses and we were not making money from that business. And this is what's wild. This is really wild. The seventh month, <clears throat> I spent 15,000. Once again, month one through six, I spent 30. The seventh month, I spent 15,000 and we made close to 60, close to 60. And then I came here to YouTube after being in that business multiple years, I wrote a book and that business cost me zero. So what, what am I trying to tell you? I just sat here and I started not one, not two, not three, but four businesses without the assistance of a line of credit or any business credit. Here's the thing, and I'm gonna blame it on the YouTube marketing department. YouTube is an incredibly powerful and influential device. It's incredibly passionate. And like I said, there's about 10 guys on here who are selling credit. There was another guy that used to have a YouTube channel called The Credit Game. He got into legal trouble. His YouTube channel is no longer up. And what you with the YouTube methodology, the YouTube arc is you need business credit to start business. There's a YouTuber, I'm not mentioning her name, who's you need business credit to start a business. And I started not one, not two, not three, but four businesses 
without the assistance of a business credit card or the assistance of a line of credit or the assistance of any business credit. Yet you will literally come here to YouTube and you will have person after person telling you how to get a lot of business credit. All right, this is my bank. This is, these are my, mostly these are my personal credit cards and these are a lot of my business credit cards the ones that i'm not carrying in my wallet so you have a ton of people out there and here's the thing my business credit i believe i just paid off american express so i owe american express zero i have a capital one card that i put some on i think i owe them 30. i have a truest card that's paid off and at the moment, I have no debt on any of my business credit products. To hear over and over and over, you need business credit to start a business is a lie. It's 100% one of the biggest lies you will hear online. But once again, YouTube is extremely powerful. YouTube is extremely influential and you will have people out there who are completely unaware, unknowing that they can start a business without business credit. Once again, I started not one, not two, not three, but four businesses without the assistance of business credit. So what can we learn from this? Number one, if your business is working, you may not need business credit. And I'm gonna say this because essentially, let me give you the roadmap for a business that I started with cash, I spent $400,000 buying 30 rental cars. I financed one rental car. And after six months, I realized that business was not for me. If you wanna rent cars, if you wanna get into that, may be the business for you, but renting cars, meeting people, and I'm gonna explain to you why that wasn't the business for me. In my house, in my home office, I made $3 million working from home. I didn't have to meet anyone. I didn't, and once again, that business required zero business credit. Let me say that again, I had a 3 million that year business that required zero business credit. And it just wasn't for me, but because, and essentially I shut that business down well over a year ago, I still have six cars. That's one of the things I was doing today. I went over there and I had to list the cars because my plan is to sell these cars to a dealer during tax season because the price of cars is dropping like crazy. And I'm just going ahead and I've got myself mentally there just to go ahead and lose the money, sell the cars to a dealer and get out of those cars. One of the things that you are not hearing on the YouTube marketing machine is that if you sit down with a plan and the first thing is once again the business has to work if you have a business and you're putting a lot of time you're putting a lot of effort and you're even adding some money and you're just not making sales and i will give you some timelines if you're doing that for 30 to 90 days in 90 days you're not making any money that may not be the business for you that may simply not be the business for you and one of the big issues that we're having in these conversations is no one is talking about the things you need to do to get a business up and running, making anywhere from several hundred thousand to millions without the use of business credit. And let me go ahead and explain to you what I was gonna do with the car rental business. Number one, I found it very difficult to get the type of information that I wanted to get. Found it very challenging. And once, if you will notice, you did not see the type of videos that I was putting up on YouTube until after I put them up, because number one, I was already well off and I did not need to create a car selling course to get your money so I could be 100% truth. Like Shelby Church. Shelby Church is a YouTuber. She bought an Airbnb property and she came on YouTube and talked about she was losing money and the Airbnb people came for her and now the people who came for her are kind of like, yeah, there's really, there, there's issues with Airbnb. We're losing money. We're not making money. And this is one of the big things that happens when you get into a business and the business isn't working. One of the big issues, cause you know, I see all of these people talking about how to get business credit. 
and I see stuff that at this at this juncture, I'm going to just say it's 100% foolish to go out and get business credit to invest in cryptocurrency is fantastical. I think it's one of the stupidest things I've heard anyone ever say, because here's the thing. You go out and you get the business credit. Once again, this is the majority of my business credit, which is unused at the moment. And we're going to talk about the utilization of business credit. Now, number one, I have business credit because I am not Dave Ramsey. I do believe in the power of credit. I do believe in using credit in its proper lane. You should never start a business business credit. I was listening to the girl who's got the Airbnb. I made three month, three million dollars in six months. I actually heard this girl say, if you have decent credit, go out and get a business credit card. I'm going to tell you why that's just not going to work. Go out and get a business credit and to set up your Airbnb using the business credit card to buy the furniture. Okay. Let me explain something as a person who has many business credit cards. Your business credit is going to be a reflection of your personal credit. So if you've got a bunch of personal credit cards with three, four and five thousand dollar limits, guess what the limits of your business credit cards are going to be? Maybe two thousand dollars above your lowest credit line. That's what your business credit is going to be. You're not. And this is one of the things I fully disagree with the people who are selling business credit advice. You're not going to get a business credit card unless with a 30, 40, $50,000 limit, unless you have a personal credit card with minimum 25, $30,000 limits. So if your personal credit isn't jacked up, and this is one of the things we're going to talk about in the upcoming training, you can go out and get business credit. You don't have to lie, but you're just not going to get that much business credit. And one of the, the reasons that I feel that I have gotten significant business credit is because I have worked on my personal credit as personal credit. I worked on it and I have a bunch of 25 and $35,000 limit credit cards on my personal credit and my business credit. I have 50 to $75,000 credit limits, which I am not using at the moment. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm not using them before I deploy this capital. It's got to be a sure thing. I am not going to use any of my business credit cards or business access of funds for anything that I do not know if it's going to work. That's just stupid. So what would I do? I would take my cash, start the business, get it to a certain point, make sure that the business works, which is something that literally I've seen. I've not watched them all because I don't feel there's anything that they can teach me but I've seen there is literally thousands of business credit videos on YouTube. And one of the things I find to be real interesting is EIN credit. These are business credit cards that you get off your EIN number. Once again, can you get business credit off your EIN? Absolutely. Is this business credit going to be 50, 60, 75, 100,000? No, it's not. Because here's the thing, your personal credit is a reflection of your business credit. The better that your personal credit is. And once again, I'm not even talking about you have to have an 850. As long as you're over 700, that's good enough to get you a business credit card with most banks that will take your stated income to give you a business credit card. It will not work with Wells Fargo. It will not work with Bank of America. You cannot get a Bank of America business credit card. You cannot get a Bank of America line of credit without showing your tax returns. However, they do have a business line of credit for cars where you can get four cars with one hard pull and they don't require any looking at your tax documentation. But once again, question, how many of you have businesses that need four new cars? Just putting that out there. But once again, you should get the business up, running, started making money and then use your business credit to access more money, more deals like years and years ago. I, I used some business credit when I was selling furniture and I would buy a container worth of furniture, right? 
but I would factor it, which is a form of business credit. And that was the only thing I was using the business credit for. And they charged me like six points. So if I got like 20,000, I had to pay them a 6% interest rate. And if the, and here's the thing with factoring, the longer that you have the factoring going on, the more expensive it gets. So if you go ahead and pay it off real quick, it's not going to be that much. But if you go on and let it drag on for a few months, it can get incredibly expensive. This is how they make their money. But once again, I am putting out this video to let you guys know that you can start a business without a credit card, without a line of credit, without any of these credit products, and you can make up to millions of dollars without the assistance of business credit you can do that and this is one of the reasons i'm putting this video out because literally everywhere i've gone i've and once again i'm not mentioning any names because i don't want any youtube beefs i don't want any youtube heat but i've literally seen one of the things that is beyond crazy and here's the thing instead of focusing on how to get business credit you should focus on how to make your business work if your business is working and making money, you will be better than okay. You will be doing great. You will be setting yourself up quite well. You will be doing the things you need to do to make your business successful. So that's one of the things you should work on. And once again, in July, we're gonna get into some new training because there's a million and one businesses you can get into depending upon your affinity, depending upon how you're situated, depending upon how you're set up. So look for that starts January the 1st and a lot of things will start January the 1st. So be on the lookout of this new training that is coming to you here on this YouTube channel. And I'm gonna put out some new paid training that's going to literally knock your socks off. So get ready for it because we start March the 1st.